uh, I got started on the disjoint set union problem at that point. Keeping track of disjoint sets union, using union find and path compression and so on. The question was how do you analyze this incredibly simple algorithm? So Knuth had posed this as an open problem with the assumption that this thing actually runs in linear time, constant time per operation. In the amortized sense, which means that if you do a sequence of operations, the total time for the operations is linear in their number, even though an individual operation may take more time than some of the other operations. So um, there was a false proof of a linear time bound, which Mike Fisher, who I think was at Yale at that point, or he might have still been at uh, MIT, he found the bug in the proof and he got an n log log n upper bound which he presented at this IBM workshop which is also where Karp presented his famous paper on many different NP complete problems. And Hopcroft and Ullman were working on it at the same time. Uh, they managed to improve Mike Fisher's upper bound to a log star per operation, upper bound. Again, log star is the number of times the log function has to be iterated to get down to one. So linear versus log star. So everybody was trying to beat down the upper bound. I asked the question, what if it's not linear? How would you prove that? You need to construct an example for any fixed value k, you need to construct a problem in which you can do a linear number of operations, each of which takes k steps. If you can do that for all possible k, it can't be linear. So I started playing with examples, and I was able to get a double recursive construction that showed that indeed for all possible k, there's a big enough n such that there's an example of size n where you can do linear number of operations all costing k. And the growth rate of n, the recursion looks just like the Ackerman function, which is this crazy function that Ackerman invented way back when to show that primitive recursion is not powerful enough to do all possible computation. General recursion is more powerful than primitive recursion. And it's a diagonalization over the primitive recursive functions. So here is this crazy function. So if you turn it around, that means that the running time of this algorithm is not linear, not constant per operation. It's at least inverse Ackerman function. So then the natural question is, is this right, or is it log star, or is it something crazy in between? So at that point, uh, that's kind of when I moved to Berkeley. I spent a year or a year and a half trying to prove that that bound was tight, because it's more interesting than linear or log star, because nobody had ever seen this function in the analysis of an algorithm at that point. And eventually I managed to prove that it was an upper bound as well as a lower bound. So that I thought was very, very cool. I was very proud of that accomplishment. So Worked hard for a very long time on that problem.